Introducing a Native American tale from the Northeast, how Chickman got his stripes. Written by Joseph and James Goodman. Pictures by Josie Ardu and Erland Dewey. One autumn day long ago, Bear was walking. As he walked, he began to brag. I am Bear. I am the biggest of all animals. Yes, I am. I am Bear. I am the strongest of all animals. Yes, I am. I am Bear. I am the loudest of all animals. Yes, I am. I am Bear. I am Bear. I can do anything. Yes, I can. As soon as Bear said those words, a little voice spoke up from the ground. Can you really do anything? Bear looked down. He saw a little brown squirrel standing on his hind leg. Can you really do anything? Brown squirrel asked again. Bear stood up very tall. I am Bear. I can do anything. Yes, I can. Can you tell the sun not to rise tomorrow morning? Brown I have never squirrel asked. I have never tried that before, but I am Bear. I, I can do that. Yes, I can. Bear turned west to face the sun. It was time when the sun always goes down. Bear stood up to his full height and spoke in a loud voice. Sun do not come up tomorrow. At his words, the sun began to disappear behind the hills. You see, Bear said, Sun is afraid of me. He is running away. But will the sun come up tomorrow? Brown Squirrel asked. No. Bear answered, The sun will not come up. Then Bear turned to face east, the direction where the sun always used to come up. He sat down. Little brown, little brown squirrel sat down beside him. All that night they did not sleep. All that night, Bear kept saying these words: "The sun will not come up. <clears throat> the sun will not come up." <clears throat> but as the night went on, little brown squirrel began began to say something, something too. He said these words: "The sun is going to rise. Woo! The sun is going to rise. Woo!" All through the night they sat there, one by one, another. Another animal gathered around them. Fox, wolf, deer, and moose, rabbit and porcupine, hawk and owl, otter and beaver, frog and turtle, and even the little mice came. They wanted to see who would be right, bear or brown squirrel. This is what the other animals heard. The sun will not come up. <clears throat> the sun is going to rise. Ooh. The sun will not come up. <clears throat> the sun is going to rise. Ooh. Finally, it was just before dawn, the time when the sun always used to come up. Look, said Turtle. A little bit of red is starting to show. Yes, said Owl. I, oh. I believe the sun will rise today. Bear only chanted louder. The sun will not come up. <laughs> the, but right next to him, little brown squirrel piped up. The sun is going to rise. Woo! And the sun came up. The birds sang their welcoming songs. The bright light of the new day spread over the land. Everyone was happy except one animal. That was Animal Bear. He sat there with his head down with a grumpy look on his face. The happiest animal of all was Little Brown Squirrel. The sun came up! He chirped. The sun came up! The sun came up! The sun came up! Brown Squirrel was so happy, he forgot what his wise old grandmother had told him when he was very young. Brown Squirrel! His grandmother had said, It is good to be right about something, but when someone else is wrong, it is not a good idea to tease him. Now little brown scrubby began to tease Bear. Bear is foolish, the sun came up. Bear is silly, the sun came up. Bear is stupid, the sun came up. The bear's big paw came down on little brown scrub, pinning him to the ground. The bear leaned over and opened his huge mouth. Yes, the bear growled. The sun did come up. Yes, I do look foolish. But you will not live to see another sunrise. You will not ever tease anyone else again. Because I bear are going to eat you. Brown Squirrel thought fast. You are right to eat me, he said. I was wrong to tease you. I would like to say I'm sorry. I cannot say anything. I cannot say anything at all. I cannot even take a deep breath and apologize before you eat me. That, that is a good idea, Bear said. I would like to hear you apologize before I eat you. So Bear lifted up his paw, but instead of apologizing, Brown Skull ran. He ran as fast as he could toward the pile of stones where he had had his home. He had a tunnel under the stones and a nice warm burrow deep underground. Little Brown Squirrel Grandmother stood there in the door waiting for him. Hurry, Brown Squirrel, she called. Hurry, hurry. Little Brown Squirrel dove for the door to his home, but Bear was faster than he looked. He grabbed 
for little brown squirrels with his big paw. Bear's long, sharp claws scratch brown squirrels back from the top of his head to the tip of his tail. But brown squirrel got away. Deep down in his burrow, where brown could not get him, where bear could not get him, brown squirrel curled up next to his grandmother and slept all winter while those scratches on his back healed. When spring came again, little brown squirrel came out of his hole and looked at himself. There were long, pale stripes all the way down his back where Bear had scratched him. He was brown squirrel no longer. Now he was chipmunk. The, the stripe won. That is how chipmunk got his stripes. Ever since then, chipmunk has been the first animal to get up every morning as the sun arises. He scoots to the top of the tallest tree to sing his song. The sun came up, the sun came up, the sun came up, the sun came up. And ever since then, Bear has been the last animal to get up. He does not like to hear Chipmunk's song. It reminds him, as it reminds us all, that no one, not even Bear, could do anything. Created using Powtoon.